Hello everyone, thank you for having me today. Uh, I'm going to give a brief explanation of some of the work the BBC R&D has been doing with speech analysis. I'm Head of Internet Research and Future Services for BBC R&D. Just a tiny introduction, most of you probably have heard of the BBC, you know our programmes, we're the largest broadcaster in the world. We also have an R&D department. In fact, we like to think in our R&D department that we're an engineering organisation that happens to make some programmes on the side. We've been around for about 80 years, we helped invent lots of technologies you've probably heard of. There's about 200 researchers, engineers and scientists. We support our day-to-day -day business, which is TV channels, radio programmes, and website. We conduct industrial peer-reviewed and or academic research into the future of media. We do self-initiated research, we also do collaborative funded projects, Framework 7, FIPPP, national funded bodies and we work with other broadcasters. So about six months ago we were given access to the World Service Archive. The World Service is the externally facing radio station which is available as its name would suggest all around the world. We were given access to about 70,000 radio programmes which go back more than 60 years. Uh, it's three years of continuous audio if you listen to it end to end and obviously because we're continually trans uh, transmitting and we have a number of different networks this is getting larger every day. The metadata is sparse at best, terrible at worst, things like six hours of, of, of audio, it just says sport written on it. When you listen to it, it isn't even about sport. Um, some of the other metadata we have, that it was created in uh, 19... A lot of stuff created on the 1st of January 1970, which would be a famous date for some of you. Less obvious is stuff that was created in 999 or 2099. So, uh, lots of problems. There's about 500 terabytes of uncompressed WAVs and high-quality MP3s. This is a nationally funded project with a small SME called Meta Broadcast. Um, it's plays, features, documentaries going back 60 years, and it's right clear for worldwide use, which means we can play with it and we can do interesting stuff with it. A lot of our content is locked to the UK. This stuff isn't. Roughly cut by genre, it's not the news. So if you want stuff on, say, the fall of the Berlin Wall, <laughs> if you want a, a magazine programme discussing the impact of the fall of the Berlin Wall, we've got lots of it. For some reason we've got lots of African drama and loads of Brecht. I don't know why, it's what they kept at the time, that's a rough cut of it. Um, why we've had to use language tools for this is it's impossible to recategorise this stuff. Some of it's very, very specialised domains. Um, we need to identify links within these programmes and also outwards to the web. This is obviously an ongoing archive and there's a constant pressure on us to spend less money on managing our content and more money on creating it. Um, why is it useful to R&D? Well, it's a massive data set. It, it allows us to research very complicated user journeys, using worldwide content, and also um, interest in future user interfaces. It will have um, um, a usage in our other content areas, and also for other domains. There's a lot of museums and archives that about 10 years ago digitised their content. Great. Terrible metadata, less great, but with the work that we're doing here, hopefully that we can take this and it can be useful for, say, a national archive or a newspaper archive. Um, this is difficult, I'm sure you will know this. Uh, there's a lack of publicly available acoustic and language models for speech rack. Most of the available ones um, are trained on US English with US speakers. The World Service Archive is um, basically the, the colonial voice of the BBC. It's a very, very BBC English but from 60 years ago, and someone from India. That is not what Google are interested in. If anyone from Google's here, come and talk to us, love to. Um, so we really think that there's a need for a good open source British English acoustic model, and there are obviously needs for good open language models for a variety of domains. Within this, the World Service English, it's, as well as these problems I've explained, it's also some very, very niche bits of content. You know, it's, 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 it's stuff that was interesting to one producer 38 years ago. This has never been listened to again. To be honest, some of it will never be listened to by a human because it's so niche, which is why we have to do it computationally. Um, <clears throat> processing it, we've basically isolated the workflow into individual workers. Um, we use Amazon Web Services to do the computational stuff, manage it uh, sensibly, uh, managed by message queues and an API. We've released all this as free software, by the way. Our only bottleneck is the upload speed to Amazon servers. Um, example of it in action, it, there's links at the end if people want to have a look. Um, pretty basic stuff for a lot of you. I mean, we're coming at this from an uh, industrial R&D point of view. Um, to a certain extent, we had to um, come at this from a standing start, but we think we've made some pretty good progress. Um, at the moment, we've got a word error rate of about 47%, where 100% is defined as someone that's a subject specialist listening in a quiet room. We're never going to get 100%, but what we want to do with this is get it in front of listeners. And in order to do that, we've got to get it above 50%, so that it's good enough for people to actually make sense of 
Here's an example of it in action. Fingers crossed if my VPN works, I can show it you live in a minute. So what we've done here is we've taken this show, put it through our um, uh, speech recognition systems, and then deduced the uh, information you see on screen here. The first broadcast date here is correct. Um, we've, we've, we, we match things where it is ridiculous, either 1917, 999, or any ethnic parts we've explained about. And then we're beginning along the bottom to put together a list of the tags that we think the shows are around. Um, for some reason, um, anything with George as my name, but obviously, but anything with George in it, our systems think are uh, something to do with Blackadder, the TV show. Um, so anytime George Bush is in there, um, you get George Blackadder. So it's things like this that we're trying to uh, get, get, sort of kind of work through. Um, another example here. The peer-reviewed outputs from it, we've presented two papers at the most recent World Wide Web Conference, one at the Extended Semantic Web Conference, and uh, post posters and a paper at IBC coming up this year. A quick thing showing it live, <coughs> showing the VPN works. Okay, here we are. So this is the uh, live version. Along here we have the beginnings of being able to deduce uh, individual speakers. And again, this is something we couldn't get by listening to it um, as a bit, you know, manually as it were. And we can't identify these speakers yet, but we know in what other shows they, they um, uh, appear. Um, and then this is where we've deduced the, the tag about a show, in this case it's about Southern Sudan, and you see here, this is a relatively niche topic, but you can see that there are way more than 15 pages about it, and for stuff like Europe, <laughs> it just goes on and on and on and on. So the critical issues, as I said, we're around 40-ish percent accuracy. We need to get better at understanding complex vocabularies and unusual language. We think we're reaching the limit of the existing state of the art in some of this stuff. Um, we're beginning to, this is a two-year funded project, we're about nine months in, we're beginning to embed best of breed academic research in our project, working with some of the UK universities. Um, we think that non-commercial content is deeply in need of analysis. If you make Hollywood action films, great. Yeah, Netflix, fantastic. Recommendations, brilliant. If you're making shows about mm, smallpox virus prevention in um, certain bits of Asia, it's, it's, there's no money in that. And we think it's vital that speech recognition and machine translation isn't just about money. It's about putting content in front of people that they want to listen to. Um, and we generally think it needs more help. Okay, so um, the links on there have gone grey for some reason. I'm George Wright. I'll be around for a bit. There's some links on here and I'll put it up on the slideshow later. Okay? Thanks very much. Thank you.